Hello and welcome to this brand new episode of In the Community. I'm your host, Jennifer Beck. When a major tragedy happens, it's on the news. It's seen in social media. The images and videos are easy to find. School shootings, bus crashes, tragic loss of life are just a few examples. But what you don't see on the news are the behind the scenes people who come and share the love of Jesus. In many area tragedies, the people that are doing that very thing are from right here in Northwest Ohio. Our guest today is Pastor Terry Hunt of Tri-County Family Assembly of God in Bluffton. However, today Pastor Hunt is here as the Mid-Great Lakes Regional Representative of the 46.1 Response Team. Pastor Terry Hunt, yes. Pastor of Tri-County Family Assembly of God Good in time. Bluffton. Great mm -hmm. church, but today yes, <laughs> we're here to talk about <laughs> yeah. another ministry that you're incredibly involved in, and that is the 46.1 response mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. What is what is this? What is 46.1? 46.1 response. Well, 46.1 comes from Psalm 46.1. Mm -hmm. God is our refuge and a very present help in the time of trouble. But 46.1 is a critical incident stress management team of the Assemblies of God, nation, nationwide and I direct the Ohio teams. We have developed um, four teams here in Ohio. And what we do, what 46.1 is, a, we respond to crisis situations uh, across the state. We've responded to a number of, in other states as well. Mm. So. so tell me how this, how did this even come about? How did this become something that is what it is now? Well, many years ago, about 20 years ago, I got involved with um, uh, the Western, Ohio crisis management team. Mm -hmm. And uh, they responded to critical incidents with law enforcement, EMS, uh, fire departments, schools. I'm still on that team. It's an incredible team mm -hmm. here in Western Ohio. And we respond to all kinds of critical incidents. And as I was going th through these responses, um, as a pastor, I'm thinking, you know, this group here is doing actually doing the work of the ministry mm -hmm. of the body of Christ, yeah. of what the church is to do, they get, you know, we're getting calls from people who are in a crisis situation. And as a pastor, I'm thinking, this is what I'm to do. Mm -hmm. This is what we are. Isn't that what the mm -hmm. church is? We are to bear one another's burdens mm -hmm. and so fulfill the law of Christ. So I'm thinking, okay, we have, there's gotta be something a church response here. And, um, you know, there are a lot of crises that happen in churches. Right. That need to be, they need to, they need to be helped as well. As a pastor, you know, it's kind of like, well, I'm the one they call. Mm -hmm. In the crisis, they call me. Mm -hmm. So pastors do have a difficult time on understanding why this is important. To them because they feel they are the crisis right, interventionist right. and 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 they are mm -hmm. you know but sometimes you need something other outside of your situation to help you out so well certainly so. because if you look at your i don't know if i want to call it training it is training it but is it's, training you must it's, be trained it's yes. the, what the holy spirit has put in you oh yeah and absolutely. your ability to go out beyond not just outside the church walls but into a emotionally high impact situation where people are responding so fast there's crisis there's trauma and for right. you to be able to bring what the Holy Spirit has given you into that situation yes, yeah. is incredibly powerful and the difference with ours is that we we is exactly that we bring the Lord in in all of this the greatest interventionist is Jesus Christ mm -hmm. he came into a world of chaos and a world in crisis mm -hmm. And when he comes again, he's coming to a world of crisis and chaos yeah, that's true. to deliver us. But he came and he is the great interventionist. And, and, and in all of this, um, we, we emphasize Jesus. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 46.1 was developed by the Assemblies of God. And uh, Ohio is uh, one of the, is a very active team. So let's talk about what this active team does. Yes. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to bring up some situations where you have been. Right. But before right. we do that, walk me through what happens. So regardless of what it is, we're going to talk about these in a moment. Okay. If you get a call, how, do you, how does your team respond? What do you do? 
Well, our, our purpose is to come alongside the church and, the, and, for, and to help them to be that, that key to their community to bring help, hope, and healing in a situation. We've had a couple of churches or a few churches that have called us to do, to do that, uh, depending on the situation, um, without revealing too, too much. But a lot of this, what I'm sharing, of course, is public knowledge. But um, there was an incident a number of years ago with a church that there was a little boy that had died. Uh, it was a tragic thing. And so the pastor called and he asked, I heard about your team. Can you come and help us with our church? So in this team, we have a number of uh, tools in a toolbox that we use, crisis management briefing, these the interactions and then non-interactive, just informational uh, situations. So what we did with that church is that on a Sunday morning, we, we would go, we have a mental health person on, on all of our teams. And we talked to the pastor beforehand. We talked to the board. We let them know what's going to happen. They gave us about 10 minutes at the beginning of the service to share what we're going to do. We had, we're not counselors, but that's what, they are, that's what people call, for a lack of a better word, we're interventionists. We're mm -hmm. there to help. Um, but we are trained. We're trained. This is, training is very important. So we would tell the congregation um, during the service, if you need to talk with someone, we have people in the back. We have lanyards, shirts, et cetera, and we'll be willing to talk with you. you know? and, and there was a couple there that did that. And then, and that was really good. Then we handed out information about stress and about mm. what happens in a critical situation, what they may be going through, what they may be feeling. Mm -hmm. And then, after the funeral of this little boy, mm. we came back with, um, a few days later, with some debriefing, so, so we do debriefings. So we had a debriefing with the family uh, of this little one. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we would do, that's what we did in, with that church. So that's some of what we do there in a, when we are called. We don't go unless we're invited. We don't go to a church unless we are invited to that situation. There's another response that we have, and that is to the public event, such as uh, and I know we're going to talk a little mm -hmm. bit about those, but some are, you know, more public uh, crisis that happens. So we just respond to that on our own. And, and then we'll talk about, let's talk about one that was, was not long ago. Right. Um, everybody, I would say most everybody saw shots of the video on social media. Mm. They heard about it. The bus, the, the bus crash the new philadelphia tuscawaras high school bus crash yes yes that was just i mean you got mm -hmm. principals and you know school mm -hmm. people and parents and all of those things wrapped up into right, that whole situation right. so what did you guys do in that situation? well in that situation we don't respond to the scene because that's that's not what we do we respond to the first responders we re again we come alongside of the church in that situation to help them to reach out to their community. <clears throat> we had, my, we have a team leader in Northeast Ohio and I contacted her and she handled that situation. Uh, we, and those situations are usually as a memorial, memorials that are set up at the school mm. or wherever the, you know, wherever the situation is. So we were going to take a team and just be at that memorial and pray with people that mm. come. From my understanding, there was no memorial set up there. Uh, but we then we contacted some churches in the area. And so there was an Assemblies of God church there that then invited us to come. They held an event, a, a concert, a benefit for the families mm -hmm. and for the community. And that was Thursday, uh, December 14th, I believe it was. And so we took a team of about eight or nine people mm -hmm. from across Ohio, hmm. 461 trained people, on a Thursday night, all the way across the Ohio, and was there during this great concert. There was like 800 to 1,000 people mm -hmm. there, and we were one of the, the groups there to help minister to the people. So we were there to pray with people, uh, to minister to them, and it was really a, a great response there. So. How are you, what do you notice when you come just with the willingness to pray with people? How do you see them reacting to that? They are very open. They, they are wanting that. Yeah. Uh, during this new Philadelphia, we had um, 
it was a big event. It was at Kent State University branch there. And uh, we had pictures of all those that had died. And so some of our team members stood by them because that's where people are going to come. That's basically the memorials there. Mm -hmm. And so some of our team members were there. People came by and they would talk with them as we would in a uh, open public event as well, asking them how they're doing. And it just opened up the conversation. And they are very open. They want that and, and they come and just look at the pictures i mean they're just standing there looking mm -hmm. at the pictures and sometimes they just stand and cry and so we we're not a um a high pressured mm -hmm. we wait until the lord leads us to yeah. talk with somebody in those situations and and then the conversation begins and, and we usually at the end we ask are you would it be okay if we prayed with you mm -hmm. and um, I, and all of the responses that I've had. I've had one person say, I'm good. But everybody says, absolutely, please. Because that's just really why they're there. Yes. They want help. They want yes. hope. They want to see something in all of this. Let's so, talk about a few of the other incidents that your yes. team has been involved with. Um, mass shooting in Dayton, Ohio. Right. Mall shooting in Indianapolis, mm -hmm. mass shooting in Oxford High School. Right. Um, yes. So you're right there. You're oh, right yes. there where right. the crises are happening. When, and, and Dayton was one of our first ones in Ohio. Uh, that that was amazing. We would travel from here to Dayton every day, back and forth. Again, the memorial set up. At, it was at a bar. It's mm -hmm. an Oregon district in Dayton. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, university students there, a high traffic area, all kinds of things going on in that area. And it was, it was intense there. There was a lot of activity. So we had all these crosses that are made up for every victim that laying there. People just can't come and they stand at these crosses and they stand and they cry. Mm -hmm. Some of them kneel down on the ground and some of them lay on the ground and some of them just stand in front of the, it was at uh, Ned Peppers, I think I remember that, bar. And so they stand and just look at the bar and, and they just stand there. And so we are, ready to just pray with them and just as we do with any memorial anywhere and it's really it's really amazing the people that come by i mean hundreds thousands of people yeah. just come just to stand and look and they wonder you know how did this happen why did this happen and all of that so we open up the conversation is with something along the line so how are you handling this mm -hmm. how was how are you doing and then the conversation goes from there and then, and then we pray with them. And it's amazing how vulnerable people can become in those situations where there's anger, there's confusion. Oh, oh yes, um, so. They're maybe reflecting on a lot of things. And then Absolutely. someone like you, who mm -hmm. is kind of a, an anonymous source in a sense, so you're in Dayton, right, exactly, these people don't yeah. really know you. No, no, and maybe no. that opens a door to feel like I can just, I can talk to this person. <laughs> That's right. Because the moment is perfect. And, and it's amazing how open they are to strangers, you know. Um, they really do open up their hearts and uh, we, we pray with them. It, it's really, it, it's really a, a great experience. My wife was there with us on that one day and we, there was a, um, a university student that was there sitting on the ground, sitting on the curb. My wife got down on the ground, sat there beside him, talked to him, and he, she led him to the Lord. He gave his life to the Lord. And he, he went to the University of Dayton. We got him connected with the uh, Summers of God Chi Alpha group there. And uh, it was a great experience there. So, you know, it happens. It's really good. That's right. The Bible yeah. reminds us that yeah. God can use bad circumstances for yes. good. Yes. And bring those to mm -hmm. him through that, mm -hmm. using mm -hmm. you and your wife and the other team members oh, as yes. a tool. Across Ohio, we have about 50 team members that are trained. And we're having trainings uh, every constantly, all the, all, every year we have. So, how so, does a person become a team member? You become a team member by uh, taking some training, and and on, on we are a faith-based crisis intervention team. So, one of our one of our requirements, actually, and it has to be, is that you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. You are a born again Christian. You listen to the Lord. You hear God speaking to you. You know you know the Word of God. So, there's some training in all of that. Uh, we train, I, I teach as well, 
uh, group crisis intervention. It is an international critical incident stress foundation mm. course, mm -hmm. um, which is a premier across the nation and around the world, actually. So I teach with them. And this is the material that we teach. And one is called group crisis intervention. I also te teach uh, pastoral crisis intervention. Mm. And one or both of those trainings, and there's a, a number of others, but one or both of those trainings, uh, you take that and you can be a part of this team. Uh, that is a two-day training, eight hours a day, and eight hours per day. The training, we do role play, we go through a whole lot of stuff. Mm. It's, it is just amazing. Mm. There is, I believe, an army of people mm. within the churches we're not, looking, we're not looking necessarily for pastors. We welcome pastors, chaplains, anybody. But we're looking for the people in the congregation. And I believe there's an army of people in the congregations that really want to get out there and really want to help with confidence and assurance with what they're saying and how, how to minister to people. And I, I can go on and on. As a pastor, you, never, you can never stop. But, you know, Jesus said in the last days will be perilous times. Yes. Yes. And it's not that I'm, we're a doomsday kind of pre preaching, but... The fact is, we are in the last days. The perilous and times are evident. And, and, evident. and no question about it. I believe we're going to see more crises after mm -hmm. crisis. And we are a nation and a world that moves from crisis to crisis mm -hmm. with ever increasing intensity and danger. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow morning on the news. Mm -hmm. I mean, every day I get up wondering, okay, what happened during the night? Where is the... Where is the latest crisis? You never know what's going on. It's just amazing. And, and New Philadelphia was one. And, uh, and then there's been some, so many others that we have responded to as well. Are there any that come to your mind right now that really stand out as this was, we really saw God working here? There was a number of, there, there been, each, each one has. Oxford, Michigan, there was a school shooting in Oxford, Michigan about a year and a half ago or so. And we were called by a church. We were going to go up to the memorials. And we stopped at an Assembly of God church there to check with them about using their facility for something. Until so they found out about us. And they said, hey, we want to do something. And so they had, they sponsored a, an event where we did some uh, debriefings with some students there. And a crisis management briefing uh, with, with the uh, congregation and the community. And though we can't go into the details, of course, of these uh, conversations mm -hmm. with uh, debriefings, but I would tell you it was miraculous. Mm -hmm. The change that came about in these students. I was, had the privilege and the honor to minister to students, mm -hmm. specifically those that were in the school wow. during the shooting. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. As I said, Christ is the greatest interventionist. Yeah. Nobody can do it like Christ, like Jesus can. Another one is one that really was national news, all these basically are, but, and that was in Uvalde, Texas. Mm. Uh, I was called by the National Assemblies of God to go and be the official response of the Assemblies of God. God mm. to you, Valdi. What an honor! And my wife and I. What, a, we went what an to, assignment! I should it say it was. It was. It was miraculous and humbling and just so exciting and 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 so chaplains from across the country from the Assemblies of God came, and we managed that response. There's so much about that you could have a whole show just on mm. Uvalde, Texas, mm. and what happened there. Uh, we we um, ministered to we're able to minister miraculously to every family of every student that died. We were able to contact them personally. Mm. Ministered to the hospital there. We had exclusive rights to the hospital. Mm. Ministered to the nursing mm. staff and oh, that was just unbel unbelievable. And these are people. Because a lot of chaplains, but people that are trained in critical incident stress management, anybody can do it. God has called us, and He has given us the the. You know, the Bible says, "You shall receive power." Yes. We have that. You ha you shall receive it. You have it. 
and we just need to step out and, and be obedient. And we're running out of time. We've yes, a few right, more right. minutes to go. Yes. Um, we could talk for a long time about this. Oh, but, I know. This is really, <laughs> but this is a passion. And we haven't even talked about the, the tornadoes and the, that, the other yeah, things right. that, they, that they have ministered to people too. But I'm thinking about these school shootings and I'm thinking about how emotionally oh, driven the responses can be. Understandably, oh but people, you know, you've got the, the people with gun opinions and you've got the black parents and you've got so many things happening and mm -hmm. social media goes crazy and oh, there's yes. so many oh, negative my. things that are out there. But the power of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Over all of it. Yes. I mean, just thinking about how your presence, you, you, mm -hmm. God working through you and the others, right. what yeah. that does to form to, to get into the things that Satan wants to do in those Absolutely. in those difficult right. situations. It, it's it, there's something that we teach in the, in our crisis management, and that is ministry of presence, mm. just being there. Yes, yes, yes. Just being there, mm -hmm. and just being there makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Honest, it just really is amazing. Paul the apostle said, "Know ye not that your body is the temple mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit dwells within us." So our presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit within us, makes a difference. And it brings calmness to the yeah. situation just by being there. Amazing. It really is amazing. It really is. I mean, I'm just so grateful. As you, I sit here mm -hmm. and listen to mm -hmm. what you're saying, mm -hmm. and I think how grateful I am that, first of all, you and the 49 others <laughs> so yeah. have said yes yeah. to God oh, to go yes. into these situations that are volatile and are difficult mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and can be dirty and can be um, difficult. You're just rough. Oh, my. And yeah. yet go, right. like Jesus said, go mm -hmm. and make disciples of all nations. There's a lot of, lot of stories, a lot of broken hearts. There's a lot of people hurting. There's a lot of crises going on. And the church needs to be out there. The church need, needs to be prepared because we are living in the last days. It's going to come more and more. And we need to be prepared for what is happening and what is going to be happening. And, and there's a lot, in, a lot involved in that. But there, I believe there's an army of people. If there's anybody that's watching that'd like to be a part of this team, you can you can get, contact me at 461 461 response Ohio 461 response Ohio at gmail.com. Okay, and you and can we've get got all that the on the screen yes. so people can get that. Yes. You also have a Facebook page where yes, you we do, do update information yes. on okay. there. Yes, um, and then could people call Tri County Family Assembly of God? They can if call they that could number. Reach right. you there yeah, as right. well. Yes, um. at 419 306 633. Zero. <laughs> All right. Yes. yes. You know, uh, so we'll just close with uh, one little more question that maybe you as a pastor can condense your answer if ah, possible. Boy, that's, we'll try. <laughs> You've been a pastor for a very long time. You yeah. have ministered to so many people. Mm -hmm. Why is what you're doing now so important? Because I believe it's an end time ministry with all of my heart. This is... People, because of the, people are hurting and, and they are desperate for help, hope, and healing. Mm. Paul the Apostle yeah. said, we have the words of reconciliation. It's a call. It's not a job. It's a calling. Paul said, woe is me if I, you know, if I do not minister. This is the work of... This is the work of the body of Christ. Yes. I know there are secular teams out there, but I tell you, the church needs to take the lead in all of this. We have the answer. Jesus is an interventionist. There are situations where when we pray, it changed the whole, it changed everything. It changed everything. It's just a passion in my heart that... Uh, it, 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 it's being a vessel of God. It's, it's knowing that you're in the will of God and you're doing what he has called you to do. Awesome. Yes. Well, we'll end on that. Doing what okay. God has called you to do, that is exactly what you should always be doing, doing what God is calling you to do. And if God is calling you to 46-1 response team, we want to make sure we make sure you have the information you need to connect you with Pastor Terry Hunt. All the information is on the screen, but you can also always contact me here at TV44, and I'll make sure that I get you connected with Pastor Terry. Thank you so very much for sharing this information well, Thank with you us. very much as well. It's, it's been great. Thank All you. All right. Thank you so much.
As you heard Terry say many times, there are opportunities to get involved with this important mission. Contact Terry at the information on the screen or call us at TV44. Ask for me and I will get you connected with Terry Hunt. Well, that's all the time we have for this month's In the Community. Let's close with some scripture. First John 3, 16 to 18. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Showing the love of Jesus in actions and truth. I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks for watching this edition of In the Community.